In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do an RFM analysis using trusty old Excel. RFM stands for Recency Frequency Monetary, and it is a traditional marketing technique for segmenting your customers into those folks that are most likely to buy from you again. However, the RFM technique, the concepts behind it are broadly applicable and wildly useful in any number of scenarios. In this particular video, not only am I going to show you how to do a traditional RFM analysis to segment customers, but I will also demonstrate how you can use the techniques and the concepts of RFM to characterize zip codes in the United States based on various demographic and economic characteristics. Traditionally, RFM analysis was used to segment customers. In the old days, marketing used a lot of direct mail, what's known as snail mail, or in the United States, junk mail. And it's expensive. You have to design the pieces of mail that you actually physically send out to potential customers or your existing customers. You then have to print them. You then have to pay for the mailing. So these types of marketing activities were very, very expensive. So optimizing them for the maximum return was extremely important. RFM analysis was a mechanism to segment your customers along three particular characteristics. So first up was recency. You would take your existing customer base and check out how much elapsed time, for example, how long in days it had been since this particular customer had made a purchase. You would then also characterize your customers by frequency which is how often do they make purchases in a given time frame? So let's say like how many purchases in the past year. And then lastly, the total amount of purchases that a customer made in a given time period. For example, how much did they spend on all of their purchases in the last one year? These three characteristics were extremely simple, but also very, very useful. What they found in practice was that these RFM scores, these characteristics, were indicative. They were highly associated with customers that were most likely to be repeat purchasers. And of course, this is great, right? If you're spending all this money to create these physical pieces of mail or catalogs or whatever they might be, and you're sending them out, you want to make sure that people buy when they get one. And RFM analysis was quite effective, although quite simple, by the way, but very effective in helping these types of marketers lift the return on their direct mail investments. This is a super important idea. The concepts up here, recency, frequency, and monetary are absolutely useful for direct mail marketing. Without a doubt, right? History has shown that to be true. They're also very useful for you as a professional analyzing data in any number of scenarios. So for example, the concepts of recency, frequency, and monetary also directly apply to churn modeling. So if you're not familiar with customer churn modeling, churn is this idea that you pay a lot of money to acquire a customer. And you don't want them to leave. You don't want them to go to one of your competitors. When they do, that's known as churn. So companies spend a lot of money and a lot of effort building predictive models to say, hey, is Dave about ready to churn based on his recent behaviors? And those behaviors that you use in those predictive models, often the most powerful ones are related to the concepts of recency, frequency, and monetary. For example, how recently has Dave contacted customer service? How frequently has he contacted customer service? Because if he's contacted customer service recently and a number of times, that might be a predictor that he's unhappy and he might be churning to one of our competitors. Also, and I'll talk about this when we go over to Excel, you can use this concept of RFM analysis to characterize all kinds of things. And the example that I'll show you comes from my own real world experience as an analytics professional where I used these ideas of RFM to characterize zip codes in the United States based on various economic characteristics. Okay, so let's talk about how you actually do RFM analysis. And it all comes down to RFM scoring. And it's very, very simple, and I'm gonna teach you exactly how you do it. So let's say that you are got your customer sales figures, right? So all these green boxes just represent your collection of customer sales data. Dave bought this amount, and Sally bought this amount, and Jane bought that amount. So you have all of your customer sales data. Then what you do is first, you sort it in ascending order. So lowest sales amounts down here for your customers and then top amounts up here at the top. Next up, you need to then bucket the sales figures. And what you can see here, if you count them, I've got 10 green buckets. So I'm using 10 buckets, also known as deciles. So I've got 10 buckets here or deciles. And then what you do is you just allocate your sales based on these buckets. 
So the top 10% of my customers in terms of their total sales for some given time period, so let's say in the last one year, my top 10% of customers go here, the next 10% go here, the next 10% go here, all the way down to the bottom 10% of my customers in terms of the amount of sales, the amount of purchases they've made in the last one year. So I've done that, and then I create what is known as a score or a rank. And in this particular case, since we're talking about money here, how much in customer sales were made, we're going to go ahead and call this a monetary score, which would make sense. And you can see the scoring here. The top 10% get a nine, the next get an eight, seven, so on and so forth, all the way to the bottom 10% and they get a big fat zero for their score. Pretty simple, right? You're just characterizing your tiers of customers, essentially. I'm using 10 buckets, so I have 10 tiers in terms of how much, how much sales we've made to those customers. Just because I've used 10 buckets here doesn't mean that's a rule. It's not a hard and fast rule. I've found that 10 buckets typically works pretty well. However, you don't have to use 10 buckets. For example, you could use five, and then your scores would go from four to three to two to one, back to zero again. You'd have your top 20% as fours, next is threes, so on and so forth, until you got to the bottom 20%, and they would be big fat zeros. So that's how the scoring works. It's extremely simple. And the good news is, you can do this with out-of-the-box Excel pivot tables and functions extremely easily, as I'm gonna show you right now. So here I am in the Excel workbook associated with this particular video. If you'd like to grab this file, there'll be a link down in the description below the video and you can get it from the associated GitHub repository for this video series. And what you can see here is I've got a table of data and it's pretty simple. It's just customer order data. So I've got a bunch of customer IDs, I got a bunch of individual sales order numbers for each individual order placed by a customer, the amount of the sale to the customer, and then the date of the order. Nothing fancy. And there's tens of thousands of rows of data. And you could get this directly from a SQL call to a database, or maybe your IT department gives it to you, or somehow somebody acquires the data for you and gives it to you in this format. But it's pretty simple, right? All of the individual orders for a given time period. And in this particular analysis, I'm keeping it nice and simple. And it's essentially all orders through time. Now, typically you don't do that. Usually you use something more recent, not surprisingly. So like usually something in the last quarter or maybe the last year. But once again, to keep this analysis simple, I'm just doing an all time RFM analysis. So we've got our customer data. Now, the first step that we need to do is we need to pivot this data. And we wanna pivot by customer ID because we're doing a classic RFM analysis right now, which is we're trying to segment our customers based on recency, frequency, and monetary. Pretty simple. So we can use a pivot table to do this, not surprisingly. And I can just scroll over and show you the pivot table here. So you can see here the pivot table. And I won't show you the field list because it's exceedingly simple. All I did was I pivoted based on customer ID, not surprisingly. So each row is one individual customer. And then I asked the pivot table to find the max order date. Not surprisingly, right? Because that's the most recent order would be the order with the max order date. And then I just tallied the number of individual sales order numbers that they have, which tells me how often they've placed an order in the time period. And then I just sum up the sales amount. And that gives me my basis for doing an RFM analysis. So I've got my F right here, right? The count of the number of sales orders is the frequency. How many orders have they made throughout all the history of them being a customer. And this is my M, my monetary, how much have they spent? I don't have recency yet because notice this is just the most recent order date. What I need to do is take that order date and put it in the context of some other date. So typically, for example, you might use the current date or in Excel terms, you might use the now function to pull the current date and then say how much days have, how many days have elapsed from this date here and today. Let me show you what I mean by that so that it's a little abstract. Let's make it concrete. So what I can do is I can take this data here in this pivot table and copy it and paste it into a new worksheet. I just want to paste the values, nothing else, just the values in the worksheet. And you can see here what I've done is taken the data and I've added a few columns. So first up, I've inserted the days since last order com column because here's the original customer ID from the pivot table the most recent order date from the pivot table, the sales order count from the pivot table, and the total sales amount, right? These are all the raw values, and then I added in this column. And all I did was, 
I picked an arbitrary date. So for example, you can see here I'm using the date diff function between B2, which is the cell right here, and a date that I just picked purely for this contrived example of February 15th, 2014. Now, if you're doing a real world analysis, you'd probably replace this part of the code here in Excel with a call to the now function, which would be the current date. And that would give you the elapsed days since the last order, given the current date. And you can see here that what I've got is a bunch of just dates like this. This particular customer has, hasn't placed an order in 288 days. This customer has done it in 67 days, 25 days, so on and so forth. And then now I've got my recency numbers, I've got my frequency numbers, and I've got my monetary numbers. And now I can calculate the RFM scores. So lucky for us as Excel users, that process that I covered in the slides, where I take a column of data and I then sort it, and then I put each individual customer into one of those buckets, either the nine bucket or the seven bucket or the four bucket or whatever, we don't have to do that. There's a single function call that you can use in Excel that handles all that for you, which is really cool. And let me show you what I mean. So you can see right here, right, the recency column. So this is the RFM score for this column of numbers right here. The C column is the recency number. And if I just click in the first cell, you can see what I'm using here is the percent rank dot exc function, which stands for percent rank exclusive function, which is awesome. And all I do is say, hey, you know what? Grab this particular column of data, the day since last order column. So this gives you all the values, all of the values for the ranking. And then the current value, of course, which is this one, 288. I wanna know relative to all the rest of the values in that column, where does this particular value of 288 rank? And then I can use the significance of one here. This function call will return me back. It won't return me back whole numbers. It'll return me back zero. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 0 0.9. So I won't, don't want that. I actually want the whole numbers. So all I do is just multiply it by 10, the whole thing by 10, and you get this nice collection of numbers that you see here, right? One through nine, one through seven, all that kind of stuff, great. And I just repeat this for the frequency using a different column of data. And then of course I do it again for monetary, once again, using a different column of data. And what I get is my nice rankings, zero through nine. And for example, all I can do is click on the filter here and you'll see that all of the only values I get are zero through nine. Let's do, let's do some customer segmentation. Let's say that we're going to do an expensive catalog direct mail campaign and we only wanna send it to our top, top customers. By this definition of the RFM analysis, our top customers are our nine, nine, nines. So if I do nine here, I can do a nine here. And notice though, I only have zero, six, and nine, which is telling me that I don't have a very broad distribution of sales order counts. So my frequency numbers are, they're like, they come in buckets, like one order, three orders, seven orders, something like that. So we'll say, okay, well, we only want our nines here. And then, whoa, look at that. I only get, <laughs> I only get one customer out of 18,000 individual customer records. Wow, that's okay. That's a result. So what I can do here is I can say, cool, we're going to grab our sixes too. Well, I get 389 customers. So let's go ahead and open this up to six, seven, eight. Let's also pick six, seven, eight for monetary. Six, seven, eight, nine, excuse me, for monetary. Click OK. And you can see here, we get 1,799 out of 18,000 records. So approximately 10% of our customers rank six or higher on each of the RFM scores. Voila, there you have a customer segmentation analysis using RFM in Excel. Wildly easy, super, super simple, deceptively so, and extremely powerful. By the way, if you're liking this video, if you're finding the content useful, if you wouldn't mind, give me a like on this video. That would really help me out with YouTube algorithm so we can get this video out to more people who might be interested in doing RFM analysis with Excel. As I promised earlier, you can use these concepts of RFM analysis for more than just analyzing customer segments. You can also apply them to things like zip codes. And this is a real life example from my own hands-on analytics work.
All right, so I'm in this ZCTA RFM analysis worksheet in the workbook. And once again, of course, you can get it from GitHub if you would like. A ZCTA is known as a zip code tabulation area, which is kind of this abstract concept. If you're not familiar, in the United States, we have these things called zip codes, which are essentially areas where you can send physical mail. And the U.S. Census Bureau, which is a division of the U.S. government, conducts awesome surveys to characterize what's going on in the geographical areas of the United States. And one way they do this is by what's known as a zip code tabulation area, which is kind of like a zip code. It's not exactly the same as a zip code. However, it is pretty close to a zip code. And this is awesome because you can essentially divide up the United States into these little geographical areas, and you can find out all kinds of interesting and useful information. So for example, and once again, this is a real world example from my own hands-on analytics work, you can say for a particular ZCTA, zip code tabulation area, what is the count of households that have a yearly income of $100,000 to $149,999 US? What is the count of households that have Household incomes of $150,000 to $199,999 US. And then what is the count of households with $200,000 US dollars of income or more? So what you could do is you can characterize all of these zip code tabulation areas based on the ranking in terms of household income counts, which allows you to identify, for example, areas with disproportionately high numbers of high income households. Which, for example, if you were Rolex, <laughs> you sell very expensive watches, you, you might want that to know that information to know like, where are my customers at, you know, in the United States, geographically speaking. So this is wildly useful stuff. And you, you just use the same, same technique that we just saw with the customer segmentation RFM analysis with these particular values. All you do is you just do the percent rank exclusive again, and you just pick your column of data, what value you're looking for, your significance, and then multiply by 10, and then you get all of these RFM scores. So let's see here. There are approximately 30-something thousand ZTA, ZCTAs in the United States. So let's see how many of them would rank 999, so top 10% in the United States for essentially high-income households. So all I would do is I'm going to flip this around real quick, and it's going to take a second or two to run, and I'll just show you the results. Okay, that took a bit to run, and it really taxed my laptop. Uh, the fan spun up pretty high. But you can see here, down below, we've got approximately 2,100 of 33,000 ZCTAs are qualified for 999s. That's quite a bit. And that's awesome, right? Because if you're selling luxury goods or luxury services, you can then segment down to parts of the United States that most likely have folks that can afford your goods and services. Now, here's the cool thing. The U.S. Census Bureau provides all kinds of data at the ZCTA level. So for example, you don't have to use household income. You could use things like education or folks that work in a particular type of industry or a combination thereof. And here's the great thing about RFM analysis. Traditionally, it uses three characteristics, recency, frequency, and monetary, but you don't have to use three. You can use four or five or six or 10, however you want. It's a way to segment anything you want based on multiple characteristics. And they don't have to be recency, frequency, and monetary. This is where the idea is so powerful. It's extremely simple, but yet very powerful. I have used it multiple times successfully. This is actually a real world example where I used it in a marketing scenario, the idea of RFM, for all kinds of interesting types of analyses. If you're interested in up-leveling your analytics game with Excel, why don't you check out some additional content on my channel? I produce lots of videos on how to use out-of-the-box Excel to do powerful data analyses. There you have it, RFM analysis. Wildly useful, deceptively simple, but yet powerful. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.